Hello, I'm a nostalgia critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Oh, Macaulay, why do you keep hopping up here? I'm sure you're a nice guy. Hell, you were probably a nice kid. But man, did you pick some dumb, dumb, DUMB movies! And we're here to look at another stinker with Richie Rich. Cole can seem like the perfect kid at the time to show us a subject matter I'm sure would have gone over really well today. How the 1% live. Brought to you by the ingenious visionary director of How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, Richie Rich brings to the big screen a story nobody demanded to see from an actor clearly going through puberty based on a comic strip that younger kids have never heard of. With those credentials, how could you not greenlight this? Well, time is money, so let's start spending. This is Richie Rich. So back in the 90s when we still had an economy, a young boy is born to a millionaire named Richard Rich. The boy's name? Richie Rich. You know, you ever wonder if either the father or son would have a different life if their parents named them poor E. Broke? Hey, that's my legally born name! We see them go through the typical rich kid jokes like playing catch while doing business meetings, genetically altering a dog's body to have money signs on it, creepy, even building a giant mountain portrait to themselves. Oh, people of today's current financial status would just love this film. But his life isn't all just fun and games. There's also the importance of keeping up the illusion that his life is not all fun and games. Like having him do a ribbon cutting at a tool factory. Fitting as many would consider this character to be a united tool. On behalf of my dad, thanks for the wrenches. I know my dad loves socket wrenches. I know I love socket wrenches. And if my mom knew what a socket wrench was, I'm sure she'd love it too. <laughs> So as you may have noticed by this point in his life, Colkin is sounding less like the kid from Home Alone and more like the sped up audio of Sylvester Stallone. I'd like to stay, but I gotta go do my homework. Uh, it's been real. Yo, Adrian, come on, let's go ice skate. He also has a loyal butler named Cadbury. And no, he doesn't talk like this. <laughs> but he does manage to keep a close eye on little Richie. This area is not secure, sir. Burn Don't today. touch him. It's my job to protect him. Very well, Mr. Ferguson. But grab him like that again, and you will need protection. We British are known for our strength and athletic abilities. Poor kid. Poor kid. What are you talking about? He's the richest kid in the world. You don't have children, do you, Dave? My wife can't conceive. Thanks for that salt in the wound. It was then that Richie realized there was something missing in his life. Something simple. Something money could not buy. Rosebud. The movie will get to that stuff later, but for now, his dad is back from a business trip, only to find that he has to leave again. Excuse me, sir. It's a telephone call. The president. What country? This one, sir. Uh, uh probably needs another loan. <laughs> yeah, that joke doesn't date this movie at all. Actually, it kind of makes it timeless. But don't worry, we have that guy who was supposed to be huge from Whose Lie Is It Anyway, but then messed up by choosing movies like, well, Richie Rich. Ten times stickier than the strongest adhesive known to man. I call it Cementia. His job is to sort of be the Q of the movie, making all sorts of gadgets and weapons that I'm sure will not make an appearance in the film's climax. A hundred bees working overtime couldn't pollinate like this baby. Behold, Robo Bee. Yes, you never know when the world might need a Robo Bee in their lives. The possibilities are just so limiting. Actually, doesn't that sort of look like the bee from Simon Says? In fact, don't the inventors of those things look suspiciously similar too? My God, could it be there's some sort of conspiring connection between Simon Says and Richie Rich? <laughs> ah, who gives a shit? We then meet the villain of our movie. How do we know he's the villain? Because he's played by John Larroquette. And let's face it, if John Larroquette ever played the good guy in something, your movie would just die faster. Your donations are costing the corporation over a billion dollars a year, and I think it's just time we asked ourselves, what are we getting for it? He's their advisor and doesn't like how charitable their donations are and how wasteful their inventions may seem. We have glasses to help us see better and hearing aids to help us hear better. Why shouldn't we have something to help us smell better? This thing's way out of whack. Mm. Can I be excused? Thank you. Hey, yo, I'm like a mini Tony Danzi here. If I may, might I suggest that you consider beefing up the security system? Oh, I don't think that'll be necessary, Lawrence. I mean, after all, all of our 
Real valuables are locked in the rich family vault. Vault. So he makes the incredible discovery that the rich family is rich! And that taking control of their vault might make him even richer. Though to be fair, it looks like he's pretty rich already. He just fired a limo driver for parking too close to a puddle of water. How much more money do you need? No, oh, I just want enough to buy a spaceship, go to the edge of the universe, travel through the outer rim, have an existential journey of self, and become the next evolution of mankind, therefore being in control of all the universe. But I bet you call me selfish for wanting that. Dead link on. Locate dead. Hiya, slugger. Locating dad now. Don't you just love early CG technology that's trying to look hip but instead just gives you diarrhea of fear? Locate dead. Hiya, slugger. And why do his pupils get bigger? It's like he's looking to suck out my soul. Hiya, slugger. Yeah. Ah! So Richie does what most kids would do around that age. Gives his dad a call when he has a zit. Did you do that growing up? I think I'm getting a zit. What do you think? Could we talk about this later? Oh, sure, Dad. I'm sorry. I'll see you tonight. Bye. See ya. See, this is one of the problems with the movie. The Richie character is so bland that we don't really know what to make of a scene like this. Is it funny because he's talking to him at such a delicate time, or because he's bringing it up to him at all? Most kids don't act this way, but we have no idea if that's the way the character is or if the writer just doesn't know much about kids. Nothing else about Richie himself is noticeably that strange. So we don't know who's the one who's supposed to be acting out of line here, the father or the son. It's like the Animaniacs joke. Knock knock. Who's there? Max. Max who? Max wants to come in and go crazy. Okay, now that's not really a joke, is it? You see, because it makes no sense. It does if you know Max. But I don't know Max! If you did, you'd be laughing. Same thing here. We see how Richie lives, but really we know nothing about him. Just that he has a lot of stuff. So a lot of these jokes fall flat. Some of the rich jokes are funny, but if you can't gauge the reaction of the character this stuff is being bounced off of, you yourself don't know how you're supposed to react. All we ever get is that he wants to get out more. So he manages to bring in, well, let's call them what they really are, a bunch of tokens. The token black kid, the token fat kid, the token cool kid, and the token girl. Kid. We know who you are. What, no chopper? <laughs> and God said unto Noah, bring me one of every stereotype, and you will have your crappy 90s movie. And Noah said, No! And God struck him down with light. The end. Now the world don't move to the beat of just one drum. So Richie tries to befriend them, but in a very strange strategy, they decide it's best not to befriend the incredibly rich child. Yeah, I mean, what could they possibly gain hanging out with the richest kid in the world? <laughs> so stupid. So what are you doing here? Well, I was wondering if maybe I can play with you guys. Play? No, I don't think this is such a great idea. Okay, okay. 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 all right. Okay. All right. NOT! <laughs> Do They got me with the NOT card! Even though technically they never said anything positive to have the NOT card follow it. OH! It still hurts! I wish there was something I could do to combat it or fight back, but... BY GOD IT'S JUST TOO COOL! IT'S THE PERFECT DEFENSE! IT WILL NEVER NOT BE POPULAR AS LONG AS I LIVE! NOT! <laughs> the walking Sunny D commercial finally agrees to meet up with him and, needless to say, they're impressed. Man, it ain't no house, it's a whole hood. I'm the black one. Luncheon is served. All right, food! I like this place. I'm the fat one. Food is my only identity. Master Richie was of the opinion that his young guests deserve a break today. I believe that's bad screenwriting for insert your plug here. No goddammit! The jello pudding pop is the best kind of pudding pop. Oh my goodness, a grenade. Now, folks. So they ride ATVs, speedboats, 
the Iron Wolf from Six Flags Great America that they're now claiming is in their backyard. It's a whole lot of fun. But he then comes across some bad news. Apparently Lara Cat put a bomb on his parents' plane and they crashed into the ocean. They managed to stay afloat, but sadly nobody can find them. With them out of the way, Lara Cat thinks he can run the businesses and shut down the factories that he finds pointless. But what's this? A child taking over the industry? Whoa! Not since Hero Pink have I seen business ethics so inspired! Please, have a seat. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, that was pretty badass. How much stock do I own? 51% of the voting stock. Yes, but you are not of legal age to exercise your voting right. I stand in loco parentis and guardian ad litem to Master Ritchie. And accordingly, I give him full proxy power and authority. Like a motherfucking boss, sir. So Ritchie is now running things, and like always, he does a good job of it. You know, wouldn't it be more awesome in one of these movies if the hero just crashes and burns the company? Billy Bean has tried to reinvent a system that's been working for years. Hey, Daddy, do you think you'll lose your job? You're discounting what scouts have done for 150 years? What the hell am I doing? Just not working out. Some employee downsizing. Downsizing? You mean fire people. It is our job to cut the fat. My father never fired anybody. He always said that when people are secure in their jobs, they work harder, they work happier, they work better. That's the dumbest thing I ever heard! Nobody has a perfect hiring record. You're going to make mistakes and hire the wrong people. Like people who are underqualified or overqualified. Or put a fucking bomb on a plane and blow your parents up. Don't you think that's a firing offense, you mental laxative of a movie? All those in favor of my motion. All opposed? I drink your milkshake. Uh, yeah, maybe for Nambla Weekly. I hate that kid. So he thinks of another way to take him down. He has the butler Cadbury arrested for... I don't know, making his eggs smaller or something. We received an anonymous tip and searched a rich mansion. Bomb parts, detonation devices, found in Herbert Cadbury's rules. You're under arrest for the murder of Richard and Regina Rich. So he's framed for blowing up the folks, but Richie tries to break him out with one of the scientist's inventions. I want you to give this to my uncle. He sits. What's this? Very special toothpaste. He has really sensitive teeth. Well, this is Chicago, and it is Crook County, so I'll allow it. All right, you got 10 minutes to do whatever. Ew. Dun, dun, dun. So he gets him the stuff just in time to have a thrilling off-screen battle. Ah! Huh, that saved us a lot of money. So he breaks out, and they put together that Lara Cat is behind everything. But Larroquette also finds out that the vault he wants to get into is voice activated by the parents. And guess who they just found? Oh my god, they're alive. Yeah, it's found! <laughs> it's a me, Mario Patali. So he calls in the Burger King Kids Club and, in an ironic twist, Colkin is actually trying to break into the house this time. Oh, I do hope his head gets burned by a flamethrower. Richie, you wouldn't believe what they did to me. It was inhuman. They see that the scientist has been kidnapped. Wait, nobody was guarding him? And he sees if he can whip up a diversion to distract the guards. What does he use? Bubbles. Fucking bubbles! What the heck? And by the way, what the hell is up with the adult mother staying behind while the young little kids go in to save the day? Maybe she sees them like the canary you send in before entering a coal mine. This calls for a fat guy moment. You, you guys go on ahead. I, I'll, I'll be just a second. Okay. Mario's bed tucks. What? Mario's bed tucks. My inventions? Mario's bed tucks. Mighty pensions? Mario's bed tucks. Ma's infections? Mario's bed tucks. Marty's steakhouse? Mario's bed tucks. Chew! But it turns out Lara Kett found the parents and forces them to open the vault with their voice-activated combination. Singing our song, side by side. 
Code accepted. Thank you, Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> hey, I don't get that. Meanwhile, the rest of the kids fight off the bad guys with those wacky inventions. Or, how do you say it again? My inventions! Yeah, those. As we discover that the vault is not filled with riches, but more precious memories. And to the film's credit, they do turn out two funny lines in a row here. Where are the gold bars? The, uh, the diamonds? The negotiable bearer bonds? The money? Where is the money? In banks. Where else? And the stock market. Shoot them. Shoot them now, please. What's the matter, Mr. Van Doe? Can't do it yourself? On this occasion, I think I'll make an exception. Ah! Cool. Aim for the head! How come nobody kids will ever aim for the head? So they escape out of the vault and have a thrilling climax on Mount Douchemore. All right, Come Richie. on, Richie! Come on! There's your PG rating, folks. Aren't you glad all you parents in the audience had to be dragged to this flick just for that? Oh my god, my nose! I look like Michael Jackson! Hey, Cole can testify for Jackson. I'm sure he takes great offense at that. Hence why he's still in this movie. Oh, who cares? They knock out the bad guy, he serves his community service, and Blandy Bland finds out that his friends are the real riches. Now our son really is the richest boy in the world. He has friends. So I guess that means he doesn't need the money and he'll be handing it over to some sort of charity or we'll just roll the credits. Hey, if it ends the movie faster. I guess this isn't like the worst Culkin film or anything. It's got a few memorable moments and one or two funny lines. But the main character is so bland and the story itself is so phoned in that it's pretty hard to get invested. I will admit I did sort of like the butler character as he seemed much more protective and caring than Richie's parents. But yeah, how about Richie's parents? Did they ever learn anything? Did they ever discover how to raise a kid better? Was there ever a story arc? Did they find out anything about their money or their son? I don't think this movie cared enough to answer that question. Hell, I don't even think it cared enough to ask it. It's just a last ditch effort to cash in on a kid celebrity status before his testicles drop. If you want to get rich in life, start saving your money by not buying this piece of crap. I'm a nostalgia critic, I remember it, so you don't have to! Or play the stock market, that usually helps too.